praise Be praise to praise the name of our God forever our praise is our God We will sing your praise and speak of your goodness Praise our God and worthy of praise God watch over us in the love and hear the desperate cry for all those who call to you our praise is our God, our praise is our God, bless God's name forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to um, worship celebration this morning. Before we start, I just want to encourage you from uh, God's Word. Let me just read to you a, a short passage of Scripture from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 3, tells us, you know, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them in the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favour and a good name in the sight of God and men. Proverbs 3 verses 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Father, we thank you for your promises. Thank you, Lord, that we can find so much wisdom in you. And Lord, this morning, Lord, help us to just put our trust, God, in you, Lord. Lord, no matter what we've been through in the past week, whether it's been a good week or a difficult week, Lord, we come this morning and God, we just want to trust in you, Lord. Lord, we want to honour you. So help us, Lord, to... Um, give you uh, our full attention in this time, Lord. Lord, we want to surrender our lives to you. Lord, this morning we bring a sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. Whether we feel like it or not, Father, we choose, Lord, to come and bring this sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing this song together. We bring the sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifices. Of... Let's sing it again. We bring, oh, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Let's sing it again. We bring, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to Sacrifices of joy. Amen. 
As I come into your presence Past the gates of praise Into your sanctuary Till we're standing face to face I look upon your countenance I see the fullness of your grace I can only bow down and say You are awesome in this place, mighty God You are awesome in this place of a Father As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace. I can only bow down and say, Church, let's declare this morning. Oh, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, of a Father. lift our lives to you, Lord. And we say we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, more. I need you more. More than yesterday, I need you more. Word and word can say I need you more than ever before I need you Lord I need you Lord let's sing it again I need you more I need you more more 
than yesterday. I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. More than the air I breathe, more than the song I sing, more than the next heartbeat, more than air. Thing. And Lord, as time goes by, I'll be by your side, cause I never want to go back to my old life, I need you more. than yesterday I need you Lord more than words can say I need you Lord than ever before I need you This is our prayer. I need you more. More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more. Then Yes, Lord, we need you, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you come and minister, minister to us through the word. Father, we pray that your word will fall on good soil, Lord, this morning. Lord, let your word come and transform our hearts, transform our lives, Lord, so we can become more and more like the person that you want us to be, Lord. So we commit ourselves to you. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Holy Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, seeking your guidance and presence as we gather in your sanctuary this morning, Father. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this church, a place where we can worship you week in, week out, O oh Lord, to fellowship, to grow, in, to grow in you, O oh Lord. We pray for unity within the church. As your people, may we be drawn closer to you in love, in peace. May we set aside our differences and work together to spread your message of salvation and reconciliation of all nations. Help us to be a shining example of love and grace. Strengthen the bonds of friendship between our church members, O oh Lord, and also towards our community. Lord, we pray for the leaders and servants within the church and also off track. Grant wisdom, discernment, and courage as they guide and shepherd our people. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and empower them to boldly proclaim your truth, even in the face of opposition. 
may they be filled with humility, always seeking to follow your will and bring glory to your name. We lift up those who are in need within our church family, Lord. Help the sick, comfort the grieving, and provide for those who are in financial hardship. May your presence and healing power be upon each and every one of them. And may they experience your grace and mercy in their time of need. Lord, we also pray for the community of uh, Rimbayu and Kota Kamuning and Shahalam as whole. Uh, we pray for the lost and broken, that they may encounter your love and find salvation in you. Use our church, O oh Lord, as a beacon of hope to this community, reaching out and sharing your gospel to those who do not yet know your name, O oh Lord. We lift up the world before you, O oh Lord. You are a creator of all things, and nothing is impossible to you. We pray for an end of violence, hatred, and injustice around the world. Bring healing and restoration to those who are suffering due to the war in Ukraine and in the Middle East, Father. May your love and justice prevail over every situation. Bring peace to all who are divided. Lastly, we thank you, Lord, for your constant faithfulness and provision in our lives. Give us grateful hearts and a deep desire to live for you and to serve others. May our lives be a living testimony to your greatness and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I invite uh, Asha, uh, Asha to come forward? Congratulations. Let's say the offertory prayer together. Good and gracious God, thank you for this opportunity to remember Jesus giving your spirit to the despite. Thank you not only for our ability to give gift, but for all actually give to support and lift up the life of these congregations and our very ministry. Help us. Amen. Okay, um, now we are so advanced, we have a QR code. Uh, if you forget to bring your money, you can scan and send. Thank you. Oh. You are unable to take the photo or uh, we have a reception site, we have a QR code ready, stand by there. Huh? Okay. Stand for the doxology. Praise God from home of blessings for.
Okay, uh, welcome, welcome all. Thank you for coming again. Okay. Uh, any new visitor here today? If I have not missed out, no. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Then, uh, then next, uh, the concerned church. Uh, let's move to connect groups. Okay, uh, after the church service, uh, we will have a connect group together uh, every of the church member to, to, how to say that, to share the God's words together. Do stay back, the, cell, uh, the connect group start at 11.45. Uh. Next, okay, uh, we are cooperating together with uh, EMC. Uh, the church camp and I would like to encourage our church member to uh, participate because it's uh, quite a long time we do not uh, involve ourselves in uh, church camp it's been uh, I think seven or eight years already since uh, pastor leading times so uh, this is opportunity uh, that we can leverage on EMC together then uh, we, we can uh, join them uh, for and for register you can scan the QR code that's um, there if you hard to register in online no problem I will give later come and stick with me I will give you a hard copy of the registration form no problem uh, we have two weeks to go to uh, closing our uh, 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 registrations kindly uh, register and encourage uh, those, those uh, members to join. Thank you. Then uh, we move to... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I invite you to stand and let's just uh, sing this worship song in preparation before um, we, we hear God's word. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for our sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture text is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reference for God. This is the word of the Lord.
Good morning. We would like to uh, invite our speaker this morning to the sermon of uh, What Must Be Christian Remember uh, by Dr. Paul Koch. Uh, this is his first time, I believe, to Living Hope Methodist Church. Uh, so without further ado, we would like to invite uh, Dr. Paul. Testing, testing. Well, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was 17 years old, my classmate, my ex-classmate, came and visit me. He took out the Good News Bible, the, 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 the Bible version called Good News, and he shared the gospel to me. I did not accept the Lord Jesus in his first try. He came a second time, I did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. The third try, so to speak, I opened my heart to Jesus. I followed the sinner's prayer, and the moment I confessed that I am actually a sinner, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and I hand over my life to Jesus Christ, a heavy, dark burden lifted up from me. That's how I felt. A heavy burden was lifted up from me. I was engrossed. He gave me the Good News Bible and I was reading it, but I could not understand. My parents at the time told me not to go to church, prohibited me from going to church, and eventually I went back to the world. Went back to the world, forgot about Jesus Christ. Jesus was no longer in my, in my mind, and I was back to worldliness. It took five years later on, I was revived, fired up. I was overseas. And I was sharing Jesus to every person that I meet on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at the graph, my spiritual graph at that moment is like, accept the Lord Jesus Christ straight down hill. Jesus is not in my mind anymore, not in my life anymore. Back to the world. Five years later, I went up again in the graphic, so to speak, the sp my spiritual graphic, and I was on fire, telling Jesus to everyone, reading the, the Bible, consuming it, meditating on it, on fire for the Lord. If you were to ask me what about my other spiritual graph, it could be like this. I don't think it is consistently going up. I don't think it is consistently plateaus level, but it could be like that, jagged, 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 jagged. So till today, I have to watch my spiritual graph. What about you? If I were to ask you about your spiritual graph in your walk with God, how will it be like? Is it shoot up continuously? Is it plateaus, plateau level? Is it up and down, a bit up and down, a bit and then goes up again? You will know. I don't know. The Corinthian Christians, they were somewhat like that. The Corinthian Christians, they were very worldly. They were not walking with the Lord as they should. And God had to correct them by using Apostle Paul. So this morning, what must every Christian remember? Can I have the next slide, please? Having therefore these promises, dearly believed, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness or defilement of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. So what must we do? What must we remember as, as Christians? The first point Remember the promises of God. Can I have the next slide? Remember the promises of God. Now, this is very important. If we do not remember what Jesus has done for your life, if you do not remember what He has done, what He has blessed you, then it's so more easily we will slide back. We'll forget about Him. 
So the first thing we must know is remember the promises of God. What must every Christian remember? Remember the promises of God. Now in verse 1, keep your finger in the text which I read just now. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. That is my main text. Keep your finger there. In verse 1, A says, Having therefore these promises. What are these promises? Having therefore these promises. In other words, we have to go back to chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, to know what are those promises that God has, has given us. What are those promises? So if we look at chapter 6, we'll see, we'll turn to chapter 6 now, next slide please. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, For he says, In a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This is the promise of God. Today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the favorable time. This is the promise of God. This refers to the first coming of Jesus Christ, the first advent, whereby the favor of God is upon our lives, upon the Corinthian Christians. God's favor, when Jesus comes back the second time, it is the battle of Armageddon, war. God's vengeance, God's wrath upon the world. But now is the grace period. Now is the time that God promised that He will give you the grace. Next slide, please. 2 Corinthians 6, 18. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. This is another promise, and will be a father unto you. You call Father Abba because of the grace of God. You came to know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for us. That's not long ago, we were celebrating Good Friday. We were celebrating the Resurrection Sunday. We remember back what Jesus had done for us. He died for us. He atoned our sins. Money cannot buy. It takes a perfect person, Jesus Christ, without sin, without blemish, without spot, to give you this free gift of grace to take away your sins, cleanse you. It is called the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This is the promises of God. Remember this. When you remember, then your heart will be bubbling with gratitude. If you no longer remember, you can slide back easily to the world out of ungratefulness. So remember the promises of God. This is what happened to the Corinthian Christians. Can I have the next slide, please? 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you, urge you, also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. This is what happened to the Corinthian Christians. They received the grace of God in vain. They misused the grace of God. They are Christians today, they do likewise. They misuse the grace of God. Oh, never mind lah. Jesus loves me. True, Jesus loves us. But there are conditions as well, you will see later on. There are conditions. Oh, never mind lah. I can do what I like. The atonement of Jesus Christ cleansed me clean from all my sins, what? No problem. The Corinthian Christians misuse the grace of God. They use God's grace in vain. Cheap grace, they call it. Cheap grace. I just ask Jesus, forgive me, he'll forgive me lah. No problem. And continue to live in sin. This is not what we should do. And this is what the Corinthian Christians were doing. Misusing the grace of God. Can I have the next slide, please? Now, let's look at Romans 6, verses 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? This is what God is speaking to us. We know that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses 
us clean from all unrighteousness. It does not mean therefore we continue to live in sin because the blood of Jesus is there to cleanse me clean. This is the wrong spiritual arithmetic we must get rid of. Look at verses 1 and 2 again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? There is a change in our lifestyle when you know Jesus Christ. When you embrace, receive the grace of Jesus in your life. His atonement cleanses you clean from all unrighteousness. You should be filled with gratitude and serve God. Walk with Him. Like the scriptures tells us here. Walk with him. I don't want to live in sin anymore. God's grace is not cheap. When God gave us promises, you can call him Abba, Father now. Intimate relationship. But there are also conditions the promises of God also reflects his conditions in his promises let's not forget that this is what the Corinthian Christians had to be reminded of they were misusing God's grace they were living worldly living in, in a world in a, in a worldly manner and God corrected them No compromise with the world. Like the Corinthian Christian, they were compromising with the world, using God's grace cheaply, using His grace in vain, misusing God's grace, compromising the world with the world in the relationship. Let's turn to the next slide. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship with righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness mind you church when we do not follow the scriptures what the word of god tells us if we were to follow what the corinthian christians are doing we'll be in, in, in a sad situation Look at the word of God. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? When we befriend non-believers, make them as your friend. So easily this can happen with your colleagues in your working place. You meet them day in, day out, your colleagues. Eventually, you may treat them as your friend. When that becomes, when he or she becomes your friend, knowing very well that he's a non-believer, his ideology, his concepts, his precepts are so different from yours being a Christian, it contradicts, it violates, this can happen. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Eventually, he becomes your friend. You accept his ideology, your influence, instead of we as a salt and like to influence others because you receive him as your friend, he, she will influence us instead and we will flutter in the world. Are you hearing, church? There is one lady that my wife and I know very well. She's a Christian. I forgot. Oh, I realized I have a screen there too. I'll use that later. She works in the hotel line. She's a Christian. in the hotel industry, in the catering, catering section. Her superior is a non-believer. She is under her superior, a man. Day in, day out, they interacted, they interact in their, in their work. Eventually, 
they uh, not only works, workers, colleagues together, she became a friend of him. I do not know who chased who. Nowadays, there are also ladies chase, chase boys first. So I don't know who chased who first. But they became friends. When they became friends, eventually they became, they, 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 they caught each other. After courting each other for some time, they got married. After getting married, they got two, two children. Sad to say, a few months ago, she divorced. She began to realize the mindset is so different. One, she wants to obey the Lord. She wants to follow the precepts of the scriptures. The other violates the scriptures. His concepts, ideas, ideology violate against the scriptures. That is consistent disagreement, consistent friction to the point they divorced. Where do we stand? What about idolatry? Idolatry. We see clearly, clearly in scriptures in chapter 6 again, 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18, no compromising either. Can I have the next slide? 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So, the promise of God, you will be my daughter and sons, I'll be your father, has condition based on verses 16 and 17, the, the conditions. Where do we stand? No idolatry. The Corinthian Christians, they were involved in idolatry. God had to confront them using Apostle Paul and tell them strictly, firmly. There was a couple just last year, Christians, they got married. You know, typical Chinese wedding ceremony. Their parents on both sides, non-Christians. Only the son and daughter, they are Christians. They have to go under tea ceremony. So all the asok, uncle, aunties, first of all, the father and mother, they kneel down, serve the parents' tea ceremony. We know that it's very important for the Chinese. I did the same. My wife did the same. Very important. Then the normal norm, they start to go to the altar. In the altar, all the idols, Guan Yin, ancestral spirits, the plaque, and other idols. And lo and behold, both of them, the bride and the bridegroom, started to converse, Zam cha, yam cha calling the deceased Huan Yin. That is idolatry. I do not know whether they have thought over this before they went for the ceremony, tea ceremony in that morning. Whether they were caught by surprise or not. But this is very well known. It's a Chinese practice. But they did it. That is idolatry. That is blasphemous in the eyesight of God. Little do they realize when the physical gesture, conversation, talking, the act of idolatry has spiritual significance. There is spiritual communication with the diabolical realm. Just as you talk 
to God Almighty. You talk to Jesus Christ. There is spiritual dynamics going through you this morning when you worship Him. It is not just a uh, uh, mere physical act of opening your mouth, closing your mouth, singing song, I worship you, Lord, the blood of the Lord Jesus. It has tremendous spiritual impact upon your life. It has tremendous spiritual dimension that is working in your life this morning when you were communicating with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. It has that powerful, strong spiritual dynamics that you don't see with your eyes. When they start to communicate with diabolical realm, it has powerful, destructive influence, impact upon their own spiritual life in their relationship with Yahweh. Are you hearing this church? That's why it is so important. God has to correct the Corinthian Christians. What they're doing is idolatry, practice which is blasphemous. When we go for funeral wakes service, non-Christian wake service, or they don't call it wake service, they have their rituals. We need to be very, very careful, not through peer pressure, start the whole joysticks because the peer pressure is tremendous. Your relatives are all there, non-believers. Your parents or your brothers and sisters, the peer pressure can be so strong that you just quickly hold a joystick. Be careful, idolatry. It has spiritual significance, impact upon your life when you do that. I remember once when my father passed away many, many years ago in the nick of time on, on his deathbed, my father said a sinner's prayer. To cut the story short, my parents, my mom at the time, they are not believers. But my father, on his deathbed, he said the sinner's prayer. Thank God. But my mother did the, uh, went during the Qingming period. My mother went to the graveyard. I followed my mother. I did not do any of the rituals. I just accompanied my mother being alone. My wife and I, we went. We kept the distance. My mother knew my stand. But my mother, I told my mom, do not talk. You're not talking to father. You're talking to diabolical ram. She didn't listen. When we went back home, I smelled a scent following us into the car. A scent into the house, when we reached the house, my mother's house. We don't, my wife and I, we don't stay there. But it went into the house, the same scent that I smelled. That was the time my mother began to experience diabolical activities in the house. My father's room that's now empty, the curtains started to vibrate. Windows are all shut, doors are all shut. There's no wind. The curtain start to flutter. The Indonesian maid saw it and caught my mother. My mother asked me to come and help. I cleansed the whole house. It was spiritually unclean. Diabolical activities. Always remember this. Whatever that is physical realm that you do can affect you spiritually. You don't see the demons. It's spirit. God told us, refrain from idolatry. Be loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, can I have the next slide? Remember to do cleansing. This is another area. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, B now. Keep a finger in chapter 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. That's my text, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, B. 
Let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement. Let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement. The word cleanse in the Greek is to free from. To free from. So morally speaking, is to free from defilement of sin. This is what happened to a sister just last year. People shared the gospel to her many years. She attended Bible studies on, week, on, on weekdays. But last year, she made the, that decision. She surrendered her life to Jesus as the Lord and Savior. She knows that she has defilement in her house. Her house has full of idols. She has, she has a kitchen god, a corridor, there's another so-called god, ancestral worship. They have Guan Yin, Guan Gong, all sorts of so-called gods. Uh, excuse me. She knows that it is defilement. She's, she knows that as a Christian now, she has given her life to Jesus. She needs to get rid of all those idolatrous defilement in her life. She asked to, re, to have those removed. We went to remove it. That was last year. We remove a load full, a lorry load full of those idol stuff, joysticks, everything you name it, full. Talismans, etc. And we took it away and had that destroyed. We may not have those physical idols around. I don't believe that you have that in your house. But one thing, we must continuously to remove idols in our heart. Is there any idol in our heart? I have to check my own life too. I'm not only pinpointing at you. One finger point at you, three fingers point back at me. So I have to warn myself too. Is there or are there any idols in my life that I need have to surrender unto the Lord? any idols in our heart. If you put your car as number one, you just bought your car, your car is your number one, where is Jesus? Your number two, that is idol. Some people put their wife as number one, Jesus number two, without even realizing he is doing that. How? What the wife says, you do this, you do that, sure, do it. Even it may conflict against the word of God. You know very well it violates the word of God. But you still follow the wife's directives. Actually, without realizing, you're putting your wife as number one, your idol. Jesus is number two. If Jesus is not number one in your life, there is idol in your heart. Some put the husband as number one. Jesus is number two. What the husband says, commands, states, the wife would do it. Even at times she knows that that is unbiblical. Never mind. Uh, chin chai la, chin chai la. Jesus is number two, not number one. That is called idol. Where do we stand? When your boss asks you to do something, you know very well as a Christian, that is a lie. The boss is telling me to lie, in other words. Will you do it? If you do it, he is your number one, your boss. Jesus, your number two. You have a stand firm as salt and light. Now, in verse 1c, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1c, put your finger in 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1, that's my main text. In verse 1c, from all defilement of the body and spirit, some versions use the word flesh, from all defilement of of the flesh and spirit, some from all defilement of the body and spirit. The flesh obviously refers to the physical body. How does the body get defiled? Verse 1c says, from all defilement of the flesh and spirit. How does the body get defiled? It becomes defiled, polluted 
And sin always comes through the spirit. The spirit first, then the body. So what is the spirit has, uh, is all about? The spirit refers to the thoughts. Your thinking, your thoughts. It concerns your thinking faculty. We look at 1 Corinthians 2.11. Next slide, please. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. So the spirit in the man is the thinking, knowing faculty. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. That is the knowing part, the knowing faculty. Psalms 32 verse 2, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile, whose spirit, whose mind, thinking, has no deception. So the sinning part always starts in the mindset, the thinking part. Jesus put it this way in Mark 7, 21. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders. From what you perceive in your heart that you want to do, eventually, when you have the opportunity, you will actualize that physically in the body. Don't have defilement in the body and spirit. Now, Jesus used the word heart. It consists not only the spirit man, but also the emotion part, emotional part. The heart is a seat, the center of our thinking faculty and the seat of the emotions, the feelings. That's the heart. So Jesus pointed to these two aspects. Whereas in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11, concerns the spirit man, the knowing part. Jesus put the two together, the knowing part and the emotional aspect, the heart of man. God, our heart. God, the spirit man. Guard it safely. Don't let it be polluted in sin. Before I came, became a Christian, a young teenager, my brother and I always likes to argue. People thought one day my brother and I and I would become lawyers. Never, never in our heart and mind did we ever thought of that. But we would always argue. List over list things. My brother and I will have squabbles, argue, argue and argue and argue over small little matter, even could be anything. We we'll argue, 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 argue. When I came to know Jesus Christ, I did not overcome that overnight. I was still struggling in that kind of mentality. I would be fuming throughout the night. I don't like that brother, what he said to me. I don't like that sister, what she said to me. I was fuming in my bed, rolling, cannot sleep. My mind was, act is, was active, is active, fuming. The next morning, I will go and talk to him and give him my mind. God began to convict me of my sins. Regarding the defilement of my spirit and also my, 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 my body. By opening my mouth the next day and start shooting at him or at her. I want to have more debate. This kind of attitude, mindset. God had to deal with me. God had to break me down. Let's watch our lives, that there will be no defilement in our body and spirit. Remember, when you allow any ungodly thought into your mind to sit in, in the spirit, the knowing part of you, which you know that is not online with the word of God, 
but you continue to allow that thought to be in your mind. You do not reject it. We ought to reject it. When it is not in line with the Word of God, immediately reject it. I reject that thoughts in Jesus Christ's name. When you do not reject the thoughts in your mind and continue to harbor, entertain the thought in your mind, it will eventually stir you up emotionally. When by the time these feelings, the emotional response through your thinking pattern, it leads to the emotional response, you will feel emotionally caught up with that idea. It will be far too difficult for you to overcome that sin. That's why Jesus says the heart, for from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, etc. Whatever it may be, which is not in line with the word of God. Before the feelings start to capture you, arrest you, you better quickly reject that thought that comes in your mind that is ungodly. Amen. Thirdly, remember to perfect your holiness. Next slide, please. Remember to perfect your holiness. Verse 1D. Perfecting holiness. To bring, in other words, to bring to completeness that state of holiness. It is not talking about sinless perfection. It is not being sinless. We can never attain sinlessness in our human body, in our life. It speaks of actually of maturity in Jesus, in our walk with God, to be more and more holy in our maturity, in our walk with God, not sinlessness. Remember the worship leader just now that was playing the keyboard? He's, he says, we choose. There's a very important word. We choose. You and I should and ought to choose to be holy and make a big difference. If you misuse the grace of God in vain, you will not choose to be holy. You will actually, you are choosing not to be holy. Grace of God, ma, free you, ma. The blood of Jesus cleanse me clean, ma. And so you continue to sin, ma. You choose to be holy. It is not using, mastering your own strength to become holy. We can never master our own strength to become holy. We can never attain holiness by using our own strength. That's what the Judaizers did using the, the law, trying to fulfill the law to please God, which they never could fulfill the law by their own strength. But it is by yielding to the Holy Spirit. When we yield to the Holy Spirit, yield means to give in. You choose to give in. You choose to surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit and let the Spirit of, Spirit of God take over to anoint you, strengthen you, enable you to overcome that bad habit. It is His strength, not your own mastering of physical strength and, and willpower. Your sight is the willingness to choose to surrender to the Holy Spirit, to choose to yield to the Holy Spirit. Can I have the next slide, please? Romans 8, 1 to 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why? No condemnation who walk not after the flesh. It is a choice. I decide not to walk in my carnality, in my flesh. But after the Spirit, I choose to walk after the Spirit, yield to the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, take note, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. When you surrender you, when you choose, I will yield to the Holy Spirit. You surrender to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, who is so powerful, all powerful, will take charge, take over you because you have surrendered yourself to Him. He will strengthen you and have made me free from the law of sin and death. He breaks that bondage from your life. 
阿门。So God want us to be more and more holy. I remember as a young Christian, I was. The Bible tells us, like James one verse nineteen, quick to listen, slow to speak. I was the opposite, quick to talk. Never slow to listen. Always quick to talk. Quick to talk. It took me quite a while for the Spirit of God to break me down, to mold my life, to be slow to speak, quick to listen. If I don't be quick to listen, how would I know what you're speaking? Some people, while people are talking, his mind is preparing to answer back quickly. I was like that before. It takes a while for God to mold me and break me down. God wants us to be holy and more and more holy, perfecting your holiness. I don't believe that each one of us have attained the holiness that. God is so pleased with us, with each one of us. We still have rough corners in our lives that God wants to see it smoothened in our lives. My rough ages may not be like yours. Your rough ages may not be like mine. But God, certainly, the Spirit of God is working in our lives to be more and more holy. He wants us to be walking more and more holy as vessels of God. So that we will be more pleasing to Him, so that we will be more in good relational relationship with others as salt and light. Lastly, okay, before that, next slide, please. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We need to walk more and more holy before the Lord. So, lastly, remember to continue in the fear of God. Verse one e. In the fear of God. When you have this fear, I read the whole verse in, at one go. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all. Defilement of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. When you have the fear of God, you will want to do what I have already pointed out in my first point, second point, third point. When you have the fear of God, you will want not to displease God. You will not want to defile your spirit and body. You will not want to. Be in the world. You will not want to be flitting around the world. You will want to please God. You will not go into idolatry because you have the fear of God. When you have the fear of God, you will have the rest of the points that I brought it out in verse one, which Paul was confronting the Corinthian Christians. So I challenge each one of us this morning: let us have this real fear of the Lord, reverential awe. The fear of God that you would want to please Him, you would, you will acknowledge your all your whole life to Him. The atonement of Jesus Christ is not cheap. It takes a perfect person, sinless perf perfect person, to make the atonement valuable. It is not cheap. Don't misuse it in vain. It is so expensive. Remember what Jesus has done for us at the cross. Amen. Let's all stand together. We have a, a moment of silence. Whatever is in your heart, in your in your mind, you talk to the Lord. We have a moment of silence. You talk to the Lord. Whatever the Spirit of God has spoken to you.
Yes, Father God, you know our hearts. We do acknowledge that we are not sinless perfect, but we want to walk in the Spirit. We want to be more and more holy before you. Strengthen us, and even as we yield unto your Spirit to walk in the Spirit, strengthen us, Lord, as we cooperate and walk with you. Pray, O oh God, Lord, that even as you see our heart like crystal clear and we come before you, Lord, asking for your grace of the cleansing power, the blood of Jesus Christ in the areas in our life that we have made mistakes and we carry on and walk on with you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'll hand this time back to the... Uh, yeah, great. Amen. Amen. Let's just... Um, sorry, may I invite you to stand, sorry, and let's just, you know, respond to the Lord uh, this, this morning before we close in response to all that we've heard from the Word. Let's dedicate and surrender our lives to the Lord and say we need Him. So I need you more Oh, more than yesterday I need you more Oh, more than words can say I need you more Than ever before I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Oh, more than the air I breathe, more than the song I sing, more than the next heartbeat, more than anything. And Lord. As time goes by, I'll be by your side, cause I never want to go back to my old life, I need you more, more than yesterday, I need can say I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, we need you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.